We're going to be talking today about the possibility of using stem cells for the treatment of autism. Autism is a very prevalent disorder believed to affect approximately 1 in 150 children in the United States. Autistic children often display repetitive self-stimulatory behavior, uh, impaired communication ability, impaired perception, and impaired ability for social interaction. Mechanistically, there appears to be two major problems, two major disorders which are found inside autistic children. The first one is hypoperfusion of specific areas of the brain. The brain is not getting enough blood and hence enough oxygen, specific areas of the brain, which are believed to be associated with these neurological and cognitive disorders. The second major problem is immunological abnormalities. Uh, immune response against things which it should not be responding against, causing inflammation, and it is believed that the inflammatory mediators actually have effect on various neural circuitry. So currently, today, there's several treatments available for autism. None of them have appeared yet as a golden standard. Uh, behavioral and nutritional intervention is often used. Uh, nutritional often is associated with various uh, vitamins and micro and macronutrient uh, supplementation. Uh, also, immunological modification has been attempted with uh, varying levels of success. A newer method involves hyperbaric oxygen use, the idea being that if you can provide more oxygen, then the parts of the brain that don't receive oxygen will have more oxygen, and as a result, uh, the abnormalities will be fixed. There is actually a clinical trial going on right now on hyperbaric oxygen for autistic children. And the last uh, treatment for autism where well, very experimental phases are stem cells. Different ex-US institutions, for example in China and in Mexico, have used uh, stem cell therapy, umbilical cord blood stem cells, but yet no published results have been have appeared in the literature. Now, the purpose of our discussion today is why would stem cells work? Well, the reason is because stem cells conceptually are one of the only ways of addressing both problems in autism. The problem of not enough oxygen to specific parts of the brain and also the problem of too much inflammation uh, because the stem cells are believed to have anti-inflammatory responses, uh, responses and also they're believed to accelerate healing of damaged tissue. So there's two types of stem cells that one would contemplate using for in the treatment of autism. The first one is CD34 umbilical cord blood stem cells. The second one is mesenchymal stem cells. CD34 cord blood stem cells are derived in an ethical manner from placenta. As you can see in the um, picture, uh, cord, cord is, placental cord is being drained and a stem cells cord blood is being collected. The reason why CD34 cord blood stem cells are attractive is because they have the ability to specifically seek out areas of the body where there is not enough oxygen, home to those areas, and start making new blood vessels so that there will be oxygen. For example, here is a study, a mouse study, in which CD34 cord blood stem cells were injected into the uh, systemic circulation. They were injected intravenously into the mouse and both mice in these pictures, the, these pictures are the leg of the mouse of two different mice. The, um, the picture on the left, the mouse's femoral artery, the artery that supplies blood to the leg was um, tied up so that there's less blood. The picture on the right the same thing was performed except stem cells were given. So on the left there's no stem cells, on the right stem cells were given. The stem cells were given intravenously in the tail of the mouse. So they were given away from the area that's lacking oxygen. As you can see in this picture, the blue color represents areas lacking oxygen. The red represents areas that have oxygen. And as you can see, the on the right the mouse that received the stem cells has more red, has more oxygen in the area in the leg in which the artery was tied off. 
So this is some of the evidence. There's a lot of other evidence, but this is a sample of the evidence showing that cord blood stem cells can make new blood vessels and make more oxygen in areas where there is not oxygen. The other ability of the cord blood uh, CD34 stem cells is the ability to heal, and even to heal damaged brain. On, this is a, a model of stroke, an animal model of the stroke. These two pictures are the brain. Um, the brain of two animals. On the left hand, on the left hand side, uh, there was no stem cells given. On the right hand side, CD34 cord blood stem cells were given. And as you can see in where the circle is, the mice that received no stem cells, the, the brain injury, the damage, is a lot bigger Whereas the mice that received the stem cells, it appears that parts of the brain actually grew to compensate. So um, this is very interesting because it's demonstrating that these cord blood stem cells actually have the ability to help an injured brain. Are they safe? Well, cord blood stem cells, cord blood has been used since the 1940s, not as a source of stem cells, but because the cord blood is able to transport oxygen. So it was used in the 1940s in World War II uh, for soldiers needing a blood transfusion. It was published in the prestigious uh, medical journal Lancet about using cord blood to treat kids with malaria. No adverse effects were reported. And our group has published a paper reviewing a lot of the um, evidence of safety of cord blood, which can be found in the citation here. The second type of stem cells are mesenchymal stem cells. These stem cells, they are also ethically derived. They come from Wharton's jelly, uh, or as a part of the placenta, or the placental matrix itself, or they can be attained from bone marrow. Uh, the picture is a picture of what mesenchymal stem cells look like in culture. When you administer mesenchymal stem cells, into animals that have had a heart attack. As you can see in this picture, uh, which is from Osiris Therapeutics, you can see on the left-hand side there was no mesenchymal stem cells given. On the right-hand side there was. And essentially this is a picture of the heart healing itself. After the tissue damage, the stem cells homed to the damaged tissue and helped to repair it. Even more interestingly, mesenchymal stem cells reduce inflammation. Uh, this is a picture uh, from a patient who is having an inflammatory attack in the gut. Uh, inside the blue circle you can see an inflammatory lesion. Subsequent to stem cell therapy, the inflammation went away and the lesion subsided. Are mesenchymal stem cells safe? Right now there are numerous FDA uh, clinical trials going on in the United States to treat Crohn's disease, which is inflammatory. Gravers' host, which again is an inflammatory disorder, a lethal one, and heart failure. There are numerous publications as well of clinical trials uh, from U.S. and from outside of the U.S. All of these have proved no significant treatment associated adverse events. So these cells also appear to be safe. In conclusion, there's many studies that show in numerous settings stem cells address the two main themes of two main mechanisms by which autism causes its problems. The mechanism of not enough blood, of hypoperfusion, and the mechanism of inflammation. So we believe it is now time to conduct well-controlled scientific studies using stem cells for the treatment of autism. For more information, you can go to the website cellmedicine.com. Thank you.